When the curse ends, I'll have to be the deluxe heir again. I don't want that to happen. Am I being selfish? Yes! You dick. And you being a dick to gold. Like gold deluxe, who you're keeping trapped as a soulless doll. Listen to yourself. Soul smiled at me, but the way his shoulders trembled, I knew how much pain he was in. Finally got the answer to my question, but what do I do now? Uh, yeah, Aura, tell your boyfriend to, like, stop being a dick. <laughs> Just stop. Wandered the halls of the mansion, unable to escape the echoes of Soul's confession. I know Soul didn't want the curse to bind everyone indefinitely. He just wasn't strong enough to break free himself. I had to help him somehow. Everyone can help him. With the power of friendship and family, we can do anything. But how? What could I possibly do to free him? I don't know how long I roamed before I passed by a special set of doors. A strange thought came to me and I stepped inside. Maybe Dion's in the set of doors with which I have not been in yet. Gold's room was still in perfect condition, not a curtain or pillow out of place. Hadn't been in here since Soul welcomed me to meet Gold. Suddenly felt anxious, not knowing where to look or stand. Gosh, this is weird. Am I really gonna ask a doll for help? Do it! Skepticism aside, I stepped into Gold's room and approached her. <sighs> so I stare in her glass eyes, the blue still so innocent and yet empty without her heart. Doubt came rushing back. I felt like a fool. Just because I heard her voice once doesn't didn't mean I could communicate with her. Sighing, I started towards the door, defeated and concerned for the fate of the Deluxe household. I couldn't break the curse, now I can't figure out how to help Sol and Dion. <laughs> Celine Dion. I knew they weren't expecting anything of me, but after what the toy maker said, I also knew the burden rested on my shoulders. Still, let's be real. She's a doll. I'm a human. I don't speak doll. Gold was trapped in doll form, so I couldn't expect her to help me. I should find Dion. I should. I still should find Dion. As I left the room, a small voice called out from behind. Yo, yo, Ara. I'm a doll, but I can also speak human sometimes. Spinning around, I saw a faint image of gold just inside the door. Blinked several times. She didn't disappear. Yo, he's over this way. Come check this out. Gold waved her hand at me as she stepped towards a large closet. The doors were teak and the handles pure ivory. I was a little afraid to touch something so elegant, but gold disappeared in the doors, forcing me to follow her inside. It was hard to get through the rows of dresses, now too small for the youngest deluxe child to wear once she became human again. Eventually, I found gold amongst the clothes, pointing up at the ceiling. She glanced up at me with a peculiarly sad expression, but faded away before I could ask why. I had to fight with clothes a little more, using shelves and rods to lift myself high enough to grab the dangling rope attached to the door handle. It's a Narnia closet! We're in a Narnia closet! Somehow managed to pull out a fold-down ladder and then continued into an attic. It was fairly bright in the attic space because of a few windows on the short walls and the roof above. Dust motes floated through the air even though I moved slowly around the boxes and support beams. Gold! You here? I whispered for Gold but I couldn't see her again. However, when I glanced around I found someone totally unexpected! Napping against the support beam was Dion. His arm was resting on a treasure chest and his head was tipped back in slumber up until I called his name. Like an RPG! <laughs> found my boy, found a treasure chest. Open in that treasure chest. Startling awake, Dion finished, flinched. Uh, all right, how did, how did you find this place? Believe me or not, gold led me here. <sighs> Dion looked puzzled and opened his mouth. But he quickly shook his head, dismissing whatever he was going to say. Is this where you've been all day? Dion flushed and looked down at the floor, resembling a child who got caught doing something he shouldn't be. Not every day. I saw his arm tighten around the treasure chest at his side. Curious, I stepped over and opened it. I opened it. What is it? What's in the chest? What's in your treasure chest? Though he hesitated at first, Dion looked at me, then at the chest, and with a sigh moved to open it. Despite his small smile, Despite his spall spile, he couldn't hide the sadness from his face. Inside the chest was photographs and craft projects. There were so many memories contained in here. I picked up a picture of Dion, pretending to model a dress Sol had made out of lots of scrap fabric. Aww, look at these cute cuties. Sol and I used to be really close. We'd tell each other everything. 
He always was full of great ideas. I envied his natural creativity. When I turned to Dion, there was a nostalgic look on his face. There was a brightness about him as he shifted through the chest contents. I probably shouldn't tell you what I'm about to say, but for some reason, you probably never tell other people what other people say all the time. You're trustworthy. I'm. You must be good at keeping secrets. That's me. Real good at keeping secrets. I flinched when Dion's fingers brushed against my cheek, catching me off guard. I thought he was going to start flirting with me as he'd been since I got here. But then he pulled a quarter out from behind my ear. And I was like, whoa, I did not know my quarter, my ears produced quarters. What a magical trick is this? But he just pulled his hand back and looked into the chest again. <laughs> Ooh, psych. Gotta look at my chest. I'll be right back. Truth is, I took being the deluxe heir very seriously. I worked hard to keep our father satisfied. These pictures only represent a fraction of my life. The few moments I allowed myself to choose my family. Sunlight was reflected in Dion's damp eyes. He continued back into the past, revealing so many chains that controlled them. It was a wonder this family could move freely at all. It made me reconsider what I thought about the toy maker's decision. Such a cruel man. How long have these two brothers been torn apart by something so dumb? This is dumb. I said it. Sol was always a kind person. He'd smile and take care of everything, even if he was unhappy and hurting inside. Dion sighed and felt against my shoulder. I blushed at the sudden contact, but he seemed to need the comfort, so I patted his head. There, there. I ran my fingers through his hair. I'm a failure as an older brother. I've always known that Sol was hiding so much pain behind his smile. But even after the curse settled into our lives and our father died, I never tried to fix things. I called Sol a puppet all the time, but in reality, I'm still just as much a pawn in my father's game as Sol is. So, the irresponsible behavior is just an act? Once your father imposed to make his decision seem legitimate? Oh, it was an act that he used. Dang, that's mischievous. Dong gave a small nod, his shoulders hitching. It hurt seeing him like this. I guess I fell so deep into the routine that it became a natural response, even after seven cursed years. It's not too late, Dion. Uh, break tradition. Just saying, I'm gonna be consistent with this. Screw your traditions. I'm gonna walk into this house and be like, boom, y'all teddy bears, now y'all humans again. And nobody's gonna be an heir to any throne. Thrones are over. Feudalism's dead. I killed it. I walked into this house and I killed feudalism. Boom! Patriarchy over. Your father already changed the rules by making Sol the second child the heir. Why can't you and Sol just break free from, from the past? Dion sat back up and looked at me with uncertainty itched and deep into his face. After deflating sigh, he shook his head. Sol's sense of responsibility is too strong, and besides, he lowered his voice to a whisper. I don't think he trusts me anymore. Not that I blame him. I hesitated to, at the defeat in Dion's words. It was obvious neither of them wanted to be trapped in the role of the deluxe heir any longer. But I don't understand why they were being so resistant to the change. As I glanced back into the treasure chest of memories, the Toymaker's words came back to me. It isn't always about cutting the change of the past, but it can be! That's fun for me! I enjoy taking chains from the past and being like, Bye chains! Y'all gone. No more history. History's dead. I killed history. Now it's herstory. Forever. <sighs> I didn't understand what she meant then. But the longer I stared at the photographs of Sol and Dion. <laughs> Celine Dion. Smiling and embracing each other when they had not only been good friends, but also close brothers. The answer was suddenly clear. Of course, it's no longer about who is the heir. I can't just free them from the strings binding them in the present. I need to repair the bond they used to have before it was broken by family politics. I love this mischievous face. She's like, I'm going to kill them. Yes, it will be murder of the fifth kind. Shifting the pictures delicately with my fingers, I found another one with Sol, Dion, and Gold all smiling and posing together. Gold was caught in a sandwiched hug by her brothers, and I've never seen anyone happier than that young girl right there. Dion, Sol had a dream the other day. In his sleep, he asked what he did to make you hate him. Mmm! Dion recoiled at my words, his eyes wide and watery. What? 
so really said that? It's hard to nod at Dion's heartbroken expression. I handed him the picture I found and did my best to smile through the pain in my chest. You're his older brother, Dion. If you don't think he trusts you, you gotta work hard so that he can. I know it's scary admitting the mistakes you've made, but isn't having your family back worth facing your fears? For a while, he sat in silence. Dion looked conflicted for a while, but eventually he did smile. To my surprise, he even chuckled a bit. Well, well, it's no wonder Soul's in love with you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I know. I know he's in love with me, I'm good at my job. I'm good at the dating sim. It just, it just feels nice someone, you know, recognizes. Nice to be recognized. My body froze up, my vision going blurry before heat shot up into my face. I feel like I caught soul fever. I caught soul fever. What are you saying? Where did that even come from? Dion just laughed harder, his smile brighter than I'd ever seen it before. I tried to laugh too, and my heart is beating, you jerk. Got me. Just then, it was suddenly hard to face him. You'll understand soon enough. Sighing, Dion leaned back and stared at the photograph. Look at this photograph. I knew he needed some time alone to think, so I held back on asking him to explain what he meant. Every time I do it makes me laugh. Every time I do it makes me laugh. Laugh, laugh, laugh. I'm gonna make dinner. So, bye. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, I made dinner. My hands moved automatically, which was good, because I was still hung up on what Dion said before. I can see why Soul's in love with you. Just thinking about it left my cheeks feverish. Woo hoo hoo! He had to be mistaken, or he's joking! Dion didn't have that mischievous smirk when he said it. He can't be serious. No, that's impossible. I sigh, took the strength out of my shoulders. It took a moment to realize that the rejection hurt, even though I was the only one who insisted upon it. I'd been so worried about the trouble between Soul and Dion that I'd forgotten how quickly my heart would beat whenever I think of Soul. Lady Aura. Soul, what are you doing in this kitchen? Oh, dinner will be ready soon. Bye. I must have been so deep in thought that I hadn't noticed him coming. Yeah? You've done so much for me, but held my breath. Yeah? I'd like to ask another request of you. Yeah? Soul turned his head around towards me, his cheeks pink as if a fever had returned. Mm, though if that were the case, I felt like I must have caught it too. Before Soul could speak again, Dion plodded into the kitchen. Oh, Dion. His face showed both sadness and fear, and I understood why. In his hands was a picture. I could see the paper trembling from across the room. I, I'm sorry, to, I didn't mean to interrupt. Soul sighed and turned a faint smile towards the door. What is it, brother? What do you need? It took a few deep breaths before Dion found the courage I knew he had buried in, in him. We gotta talk, dude. Something I've been meaning to tell you for a long time. Uh, yeah, what, what is it? Dion was edging out the door, and even though I knew what he was going to say, I understood what he wanted to, why he wanted to only say it to Soul. I looked up at Soul, and gave him the biggest smile I could. It's okay, we can talk afterwards. All right, I think I fixed things from both ends. Ooh, look at this bedroom. So this was all a scheme our father pulled together. Soul sat on the edge of Dion's bed, holding a forehead, his forehead with his hand. He'd always believed Lord Deluxe underestimated Dion's ability, but he never imagined Dion was being used too. I'm sorry, Soul. Sitting next to Soul, Dion leaned on his knees and sighed in relief. He finally removed the weight he'd been carrying for over seven years. Why didn't you tell me before? Because I knew you'd blame yourself if I did. Sounds fell between them. Dion wasn't wrong. Soul felt a pain, pained with guilt. After hearing the whole story, especially after what he said to Dion a couple weeks earlier, Dion glanced at Soul, then reaching up to ruffle Soul's blonde hair into a mess. Hey, I knew it. He knew it. He knew it. Uh oh, I think he keeps on plugging. Come on, Soul. Let's move out of the past and into the future. Then they like ride getting a DeLorean and like, bye, curse. Going into a future where there is no curse. Soul nodded, pushing Dion's arm away before the two of them fell into brotherly laughter for the first time in a long time. Brother, can we go see gold? Dion stood up, looking down at his picture again. Yeah, I think we both have something important to tell her. Uh, we're friends again. You want to come play gold? Come hang out with us? Be alive again? 
little thought. It's hard to explain what happened. When I finally brought the stew to the simmer, so it wouldn't require attention, suddenly a small light began to glow under beneath my shirt. Something I noticed in the reflection of the pot. Aura. I knew that voice. Looked around the kitchen, trying to pull my locket up from under my shirt. Aura. Finally got it free, the light getting stronger. Wincing. I held the locket in my palm, and when I finally saw through the brightness, I inhaled sharply. 